Hello, and welcome to Greencastle Church of the Nazarene. This is our community. This is beautiful Greencastle, Indiana. Thank you for gathering online with us today. Our vision is to enrich our community by sharing the transformative love, grace, and power of Jesus with every household, inspiring a life of authentic holiness and deepened faith. Our mission statement is, we love God, we love people, and we make disciples. Let us know how we can best pray for you by scanning the QR code in the link. Don't forget to hit the like, share, and subscribe buttons to support the spread of the ministry on this channel. We pray this message serves as a source of inspiration, igniting a deepening of your faith in Jesus Christ and stirring within your soul a desire to live a holy life. Enjoy the message. Well, it's a blessing to be gathered here and it's a blessing to be here at Green Castle Church of the Nazarene. We are gonna continue in the sermon series we began last week, which is called Winning the Invisible War. I want you to say that to your neighbor here today. Say, winning the invisible war, okay? Winning the invisible war. And today, we're gonna to be continuing within the topic of spiritual warfare. And today's sermon title is called simply The Battle Within. Amen, say that to yourself, The Battle Within. Amen. So we all know we live in a very complicated world that's ever-changing with all kinds of external challenges, difficult situations. Amen? Amen. Difficult people? Yeah. Amen. All right. Overwhelming circumstances. Anybody? Yeah. Amen. But what if I told you that sometimes the greatest battles that we face are not really outside but are inside within us. Amen? Amen? We all have an enemy, and we talked about it last week. And if you missed that sermon, you can check that out on YouTube. The last week, we talked about the enemy, the devil, who works to disrupt our lives. And the truth is that the fiercest struggle that happens within who we are is because of what he wants to do to trap you, ensnare you, to be able to put you in a place of darkness and of evil. Because the truth is, as we talked about last week, he doesn't like you. He doesn't. And it doesn't matter what he says or what he does. His intent is very clear. His intent is to take you as far away as possible to be as far away from God as he can possibly take you. Amen. Amen. So today we're going to go a little deeper. We're going to talk about the battle within. We're going to be looking at this verse here in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. And it talks about what our fight is all about. Let's stand for the reading of the word of the Lord here today. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 says this. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Let's pray, and let's let the Holy Spirit help us unpack this word here today. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, we come before you today, and we acknowledge, Lord, that we are sometimes in a battle Sometimes that battle isn't anything on the outside of us, but that battle is on the inside of who we are. Today, Lord, as we open up your word, I pray, Lord, that you renew us, you refresh us. Lord, I pray today that you, you pick something out from this here today that helps stick with us, Lord, to help keep us in the fight, to help us know that, Lord, you are near, and that, most importantly, you've won the victory. And so today we pray, Lord, that we just submit ourselves to you. And Lord, help me to preach this message with all that I have. Help me to unpack this, Lord, in a way that you would have me to do. And so, Lord, we just pray for your spirit to lead and guide us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys may be seated here this morning. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul tells us very plainly 
in this piece of scripture that he wrote that we as Christians are in a spiritual war. And this war doesn't just rage out in the world. This war can be brought deep within who we are as people. Every day we face choices that pull us in different directions. We can sometimes feel the tension between living for God or living for the world. But here's the good news. Through Jesus Christ, victory is possible. Amen? Yeah. Woo! Give him the praise, church. So today we're going to be looking at how exactly can we fight the battles that happen with inside of who we are. So I want to take a closer look at three different areas that I believe are going to help unpack this question for us here today. The first thing I want to talk about very quickly here today, it is the flesh versus the spirit. Amen? Amen. All right. So turn to your name and say the flesh versus the spirit. And to go a little bit deeper, we're going to dig right back into the Word, and we're going to be looking at a passage here from Galatians. Galatians chapter 5, verse 17. This is what the Word of the Lord says. It says, For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. So that you are not to do whatever you want. Oh, Lord, help us to unpack this verse here today. This verse preaches, I think, just from reading it. Have you ever felt the pull and the tug within you that sin can sometimes bring within our lives? That can be through temptation. That can be through, you know, selfish urges that the flesh has that draws us into self-centeredness, that draws us into being angry, that draws us into being lustful or prideful all the time. Have you ever felt the tug within your heart that you know that this thing that's tugging on you isn't going to be good for you, but there's a tug anyway. There's that tug. I want to have a smart out comment. There's that tug to want to be dishonest. There's that tug to want to satisfy yourself and leave everyone else behind. These tugs come in the form of temptation. But these tugs, the more we give into temptation, help feed this thing that we have within us called the flesh. Well, what is that? It's our urges within who we are toward our selfish, sinful bit of who we are that is as far away from wanting what God wants as possible. You see, when Adam and Eve were tempted in the garden and they gave in to sin, sin was brought into the world. And because you are a product, you are born into that, we have sin that wants to run rampant within our lives. And so Paul is talking about this here within this passage. But the great thing is, we're not left alone to just battle this out by ourselves. This passage talks about another contender, the Holy Spirit. How many of you are glad that the Holy Spirit is fighting for you right now? Amen? Amen. Amen. The Holy Spirit urges you towards different things. The Holy Spirit urges you towards the things of God. You may say, well, what are, what are those things? Well, he wants to draw you into living a life that's holy. Amen? He wants to draw you closer into being more loving, patient, kind, generous. All of the things that also describe who God is. Amen? Amen? He wants to draw you even into this thing called self-control. Amen? Now, the flesh and the spirit are always in opposition to each other. But brothers and sisters of Christ here today, we must learn to reject the impulses of the flesh and follow what the spirit's leading. So you may ask, well, how exactly do I do that? If I'm struggling with this, what do I need to do? Well, three simple things, very quickly. Number one, you need to be in daily prayer and surrender. 
You need to be in daily prayer and surrender. Begin each day by asking God to fill you with his Holy Spirit to help you resist the desires of the flesh and consistently surrender yourself to the Lord's leading. Amen? Amen. Number two, we need to stay grounded in the word. That means we need to open up our Bibles. We need to read what the Bible has for us. And we need to be able to not just read it, but we need to place it within our hearts, within our lives, and within our mind. So that way when the devil comes a-knocking, like he normally does, you've got something to be able to fight him off with. Amen? Number three, we need to surround ourselves with a godly community. That means that we need to commit to being involved in a fellowship of believers. And just because you're here at Green Castle Church of the Nazarene, I'm going to take a quick moment to advertise our church. We would love to have you here every Sunday. I'm going to say something else. We would love to have you here every Wednesday, too. We would love to have you here every time we open the doors. Amen? So commit yourselves to a fellowship of believers that are in the Christian faith. Accountability helps. Fellowship with others helps. It helps keep you focused walking together in the spirit of the Lord. You see, in every moment of weakness, the spirit empowers us to choose holiness and to choose Jesus. And when you're fighting the flesh, you have to draw a line in the sand somewhere that says, I'm going to choose this way. And the way for Christians is the way of holiness, the way of Jesus. So just to give you a couple examples, some of you might be battling with anger. Just get angry about anything and everything, all right? I don't know. And if that's you, the Spirit's with you here today. Because the Spirit's here to empower you to pause, to breathe, and to be able to respond to things with patience instead of just lashing out. The Spirit is here to draw you closer into Jesus when you feel the most angry. The Spirit is here. If you are struggling with the temptation of lust, the Spirit is here to redirect you towards thoughts of purity, helping you to focus on God and His love and His desire for you to live a holy life. When you feel overwhelmed with pride and you think yourself so great, and you think yourself so big, and you think yourself of so well. Remember this, the Holy Spirit can also humble your heart. And he can remind you of Christ's example of servanthood, guiding you to help love God, love people more than your own self. Maybe you're struggling with addiction, Addictions come in all sorts of forms today. It's not just, you know, pills from the back of an alley or something like that. The devil uses all sorts of things to put people in bondage. And he puts out more and more things, I feel like, every single day. If you feel like you're struggling with any kind of addiction here today, I want you to know the Holy Spirit is here to help strengthen you, to resolve and to resist the temptation and to tell the devil to flee and to get out and to say no more. The Spirit is here to help draw you closer into Jesus, to remind you that he has the power to break any chain that the devil may want to put you in bondage with. The Spirit is here to help fight the battles that you can't face sometimes. So remember this, church. Every moment of weakness, whatever your weakness is, the Spirit empowers us to choose holiness and to choose Jesus. Give God praise this morning for that. Amen. Some of the other internal battles that we face come in this form. I want to talk a little bit about Doubt versus faith. Amen? Amen? Doubt versus faith. In the world, there's a lot of doubt about anything and everything. There's some people that believe we live on a flat earth. They doubt that anything in the earth is round. I don't know if I'm going to convince them or not. 
But there are some crazy things out there that make people doubt sometimes even just simple reason and logic. And so here today, God is here to speak to us about doubt and faith. I want to look at the word here in James chapter 2 or chapter 1 verses 2 through 7. And this is what it says. It says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. I want to just stop at that verse. Can we just go back for a second? Consider it pure joy. How many of you consider it pure joy when you're going through things in life? Let's be honest here today. It's not always easy. But this is what the word is trying to speak to us. Let's go to the next verse here today. It says, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord I just simply want to try to take this passage to help you in your life here today <clears throat> the enemy is always wanting to plant seeds of doubt within our lives amen and he will try to take a cannonball and try to rip through your sails of faith. And he will try to do anything and everything to sink the boat that you're on, to bring you down, so that way you feel like God is not here. God is not available. God does not care. For some people, he puts so much doubt, and they believe that there is no God. And that you can do whatever you want because there's no God. You have no one to be accountable to. Since you have no one to be accountable to, then therefore, just do whatever you want. And who cares about the rest? But church, I'm here to tell you today that doubt and faith are always going to be in a conflict with each other. The enemy wants you to know and hear about doubt within your life. He wants you to doubt everything about God. He wants you to doubt his goodness, his grace, his love, doubt his plans for your life, doubt anything and everything. And the enemy knows that if he can get us to just get in a position, get in a place, get to a thing to where we feel like we've sunk and we have nowhere else to go to, he knows that he can use that as an opportunity to sneak in and to have his way with us. Simply put, doubt is a way for the enemy to work the disruption of things within our lives, especially the things of God. He puts all kinds of doubts before us. For some of you it could be, well, I doubt that the Lord may hear me. I doubt that Jesus cares. I doubt that God wants anything to do with me. I'm here to tell you differently here today, church. Doubt leads us to live two different lives. And this is why James urges us to believe. God can work through our doubts. But church, we have to believe that he can. Do you believe that God is powerful enough to work with our doubts here today? Amen? Amen. Amen. Give him praise for that. I believe he can. But faith, faith is so much different than doubt. What is faith? Well, faith is Believing without even seeing. Amen? Amen. And, and faith is talked about in the scriptures like being like a shield. And sometimes I've always wondered why, why is that? But when I think about it, it makes sense when it's combating doubt. When we have faith in God, when we've experienced it for ourselves, when we come into right relationship with God, I believe that there is nothing more powerful, more strong, nothing that's going to impress our minds more than having in a, being in a right relationship with God. And having that faith in God is what it help takes to us combat doubt that's in the world that surrounds us. 
We can place up our faith like a shield. And our faith in God is a gift that's given to us by Him because faith comes from God. Faith says, I trust you, Lord. And yes, I don't see the way, but I trust you. Yes, I know the enemy's telling me not to believe, but I trust you anyway. Yes, I know the enemy right now is telling me that my prayers are worthless. But I'm putting my trust in you, God. Yes, the enemy is here. He's surrounding me. I've got situations all around me. I've got fires all around me. But God, I trust and I believe that you're here and that you're going to help me work and move through these things. I trust and I believe in you no matter what's going on. That's the kind of faith that I believe that not only honors God, but helps us combat the doubt that the enemy is trying to throw our way. Simply put, we got to hold on to the promises of God. This is why it's so important to get into Scripture. This is why it's so important to pray and to have a relationship with God. This is why it's so important. And we talk about it all the time because we sometimes forget even the basics of the things that we need to do as Christians. But the Lord is here to remind us. And the Lord is good to us, especially in giving us this reminder we need to hold tightly to his promises. Amen? Amen? Because every doubt can be countered with the truth of the word of God. Amen? Amen? What do you think Jesus did when he was tempted? Jesus was the word himself. But he used the word to combat the doubt that the enemy was trying to place within his life. The devil thinks he's so clever, but don't let him fool you, church. He's just full of lies. And today, we need to hold tightly to the promises of the Lord. Give God praise for that here today. <laughs> Lastly, I want to talk about fear versus courage. Amen? Another thing that we always battle on the inside of who we are is the fear. The fear. You know, this is what the Word says. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, God has given us a spirit of power, of love and whew, even self-discipline, not fear, not fear. Fear has a way of grippling us as human beings, doesn't it? It whispers, you know, if I were you, I wouldn't go talk to that neighbor about Jesus. They're probably going to tell you some pretty nasty things and, you know, you might disrupt the, the status quo that you have with that neighbor. I, I wouldn't say much about faith to them. You know what fear also does? It also comes alongside of you and say, yeah, you better not do that. Uh, you know, you're going to embarrass yourself pretty badly by talking about your faith. You probably, probably don't need to do that. Just look at you. You don't need to do that. Fear has a way of drawing so many of its own lines so that we don't cross. But the Bible says this. God has not given us a spirit of fear. What has he given us a spirit of? A spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. He's given us the Holy Spirit to come and live inside of who we are, to help lead us, to help guide us, to give us direction, to know that he's on call 24-7, that he never leaves us, he never forsakes us, that the Holy Spirit is here. And he's closer than what you think. Fear will always set us inside of our own prisons. It'll always set us inside of our own shackles. It'll Put us in bondage in ways that nothing else will. And sometimes the sad thing is we don't even see that. And this is why we need to commit to letting the Lord lead us. Because we need to let the Lord speak into our lives. There was no fear in Jesus when he took on the cross. I'm not going to say it was easy. But the Lord did that willing for you and for me. Amen? There was no fear. 
Why? Because God doesn't give himself a spirit of fear. What is a spirit? It's a power, love, and self-discipline. I want you to know that with the Holy Spirit, we can walk boldly in our calling. With the Holy Spirit, we can take risks for the gospel. In the Holy Spirit, we can step out in faith knowing that God is with us with every step. Fear will want to come alongside, but it takes true courage and faith in the Lord to combat the fear that fills us with our lives. Amen? Amen. Amen. Give God praise that he gives you a spirit of power, love, and self-discipline this morning. Amen. So for some of us, maybe many of us, you know, the battle can be pretty real sometimes on what happens on the inside of who we are. And simply put, this is why I believe that God has gifted even special individuals to help work with us. Preachers, teachers, counselors, even mental health experts. Because sometimes the things that we're battling on the inside, we need to be able to share with somebody. We need to be able to talk to somebody. And we need to be able to be prepared because we don't want to give the devil a foothold in any part of our life. Yeah? The battle is real. And the battle is daily. But I want to leave you with this thought. You don't fight the battle alone. Amen? I've talked to you here today about the Comforter, the Holy Spirit. And last week I left you with this, and I'm going to leave it with you again here this week. We don't fight for victory. We fight from a position and a place of victory. Because the victory that you need, the victory that I need, the victory that we all need, it doesn't come from who we are. It comes from the one who took on the cross. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen? That's where the victory comes from. It doesn't come from anyone else. And so when we place our lives in Jesus' hands, when we give him our heart, when we come before the Lord and say, Lord, I don't know how to face this, but Lord, I know that you can. I believe that God then steps in for us and he is able to give us a victory because what's the worst that can happen to you? You're going to die? You're going to face all kinds of things? Guess what? My Lord has the keys to death, hell, and the grave. So come on, devil, and throw it at me because the Lord has already won all of the worst things that could ever happen to us today. Amen. Victory is here. He equips you for victory. Victory over the flesh. Victory over our doubts. Victory over fear. All of these things. All of the things that nab within us, God is here and ready to work within your life. And he's ready to help you fight your battles. So today I just simply want to have God meet you where you're at. I'm going to open up our altars. If you want to come and pray with with us here today, that'd be great. And I would love to see God win a victory within your life here today. But even just where you're at, within where you're seated uh, seated here today, um, I just want you just to pray with me. Can you do that, church? All right? Let's pray. Just repeat after me. Lord, I surrender my heart. Surrender my mind. I give you my fears. I give you my doubts. I give you my desires. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me strength for the battle with him. And lead me to victory in your name. We pray. Amen. Amen. You pray that with me. God is with you. He's going to give you a victory this morning. Amen. Thanks for watching Greencastle Church of the Nazarene online with us today. Stay connected by following us on Facebook by searching for at Greencastle Nazarene or fill out an online connect card so you can receive the latest news and updates directly to your email. If you would like to support this ministry, please download the GiveLify app and look for Greencastle Church of the Nazarene in the search bar. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe our content on this platform. We again want to extend an opportunity to pray with you please click on the QR code to leave us a prayer request in our online prayer room. Want to check out the ministry for yourself? We would love for you to plan a visit with us. Our service times are shown here on the screen, and we would love to meet you in person. May the grace and peace of God be with you always. May God's light guide you deeper 
into His holy presence. For more information, please check out our website, greencastlenazarene.com. Have a blessed day in the Lord.